Hey everyone and welcome back. So today I wanted to do something a little different and look at the top Sega franchises that should get a remake or sequel on the Nintendo Switch. Now last week I actually threw a question out there and I named four Sega franchises to see if anyone had any interest in this subject and I actually got a pretty decent amount of answers. So you know what I decided to go ahead with the video because let's be honest if you're not a triple A franchise from Sega, you probably haven't gotten love in years. And let's just say that the love that even those triple A franchises have gotten lately has been pretty hit or miss. And now if you're wondering why I'm not doing Nintendo franchises, well, because most of Nintendo's big franchises do eventually get some love from Nintendo because they're the main company that is producing the console right now. At least they're getting attention if you're not named Metroid or F-Zero but that's a different video. But Sega, other than a few of their AAA franchises, most have been left to the sideway at the age of the Sega Genesis. And probably already playing behind me is one of the examples that actually inspired this video, which was Streets of Rage 4 that came out last year and ended up being one of my favorite releases in the last few years, where another developer took a forgotten franchise that really gained popularity from the Sega Genesis and brought it back to life with an amazing injection of love and care. So today we're going to look at 10 other franchises like that that I would love someone to do the exact same thing to, to actually take those franchises, produce a sequel, or if they produce just a remake, at least a really ground up remake, just like some of the other franchises got like the Shantae series or the Alex Kidd series. Now, by the way, I'm calling these Sega Genesis franchises, and I know that some of these franchises have gotten sequels on other consoles. I'm calling them Sega Genesis franchises because these games really gained popularity, and I would say saw their golden years in the Sega Genesis. And most of these games that did get sequels, their sequels have been lackluster, or most people don't even know about them. But anyway, that's enough for the intro. Let's get started on the list. And don't forget that if you do like this kind of content, please hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. Now, the first franchise that we're going to take a look at is the Dynamite Heady franchise. Now, if you didn't grow up with a Sega Genesis, there is a strong chance you know nothing about this franchise. However, if you did grow up with a Sega Genesis, this was one of the premium platformers on that system. And basically, it was a very, I would say, straightforward platformer, but it had a really original premise that your character used his own head as a weapon or as a grappling tool to get around the stages. But not only that, there were power-ups throughout the stages that could actually give different aspects to his head and give it different abilities, sort of like the ability to wall grapple and other types of abilities. I mean, his head could even turn into a bomb to fight your enemies with. Now, if I'm starting with this franchise, it's a very simple reason. Very little would be need to be done to this series to bring it up to today's standards. I mean, number one, obviously a graphic and HD overhaul would be required. The gameplay mechanics and the hitboxes on the characters would need to be refined a bit. But other than that, the base of the game could remain the same. Of course, if we're doing a sequel, I would want a refresher on his head abilities and maybe change the way they work, letting you get permanent upgrades rather than just situational power-ups or something like that. But the Dynamite Heady franchise is a forgotten platformer franchise that has been left to the side. And honestly, I think it could be a gold mine on the Nintendo Switch. Now, the next series that I'd like to take a quick look at, and I think I never even got why it didn't get its own sequel on the Sega Genesis, was Comics Zone. Now, Comics Zone was a really original beat-em-up, where basically you were like playing through the pages of a comic book. But what was really different than other beat-em-ups of its genre is that rather than just blindly throwing wave after wave of enemy at you, you had to be very strategic with very few enemies placed throughout the map, and you actually had some situational puzzles to solve as well to manage to find your way to the next screen, taking the least damage possible. Because a lot of environmental objects were destructible, but you would take damage if all you did was just knock on them with your fists. Overall, it had an awesome and really original graphical style. The fact that you were actually feeling like you were moving through pages of a comic book were really original, and it was a beautiful blend of beat-em-up mechanics, but with a little bit of extra spice and puzzle solving thrown in. I would say if this game had one major problem is that it was actually quite short and didn't have that many levels. 
And if you didn't take the time to really learn the mechanics behind them, for younger players, they often wouldn't get very far in the game because you would get stuck on some of the early obstacles. But once again, if you take the basic premise of this game and you take the art style that you see behind me and you refresh it in HD for the Nintendo Switch with some beautiful cel-shaded graphics, you can tell me that this franchise wouldn't be an awesome entry on the Nintendo Switch. Obviously, I wouldn't want a remake of the original, it being a shorter game. I would want a total sequel in this case, with really much deeper levels and much longer gameplay. But once again, the Comics Zone franchise is another one of those Sega Genesis franchises that has disappeared over the years and that would really be deserving of a revival on the Nintendo Switch. Now, the next franchise we're going to take a look at is the Gunstar Heroes franchise. Now, this franchise probably needs very little introduction for a lot of people, but nonetheless, let's go through the basic mo motions. This is basically a run and gun shooter with a boss rush style. And if you like amazing, fast paced gameplay with some crazy over the top weaponry, well then don't look any further than Gunstar Heroes because this is your franchise. However, at the same time, as is usual for these franchises, it becomes hard as nails in the last levels. So don't expect an easy walk in the park with the Gunstar Heroes franchise. Now, a lot of people are gonna tell me, yes, there was a really decent sequel on the Game Boy Advance, and you'd be totally right. Gunstar Super Heroes was an amazing game. The problem is, it wasn't really very popular when it actually released, because I would say the retro revival wasn't in full swing at that moment. And this is the first of the franchises that I would say I would be okay with a remake of the Game Boy Advance sequel. The first one of the franchises that we're looking at today that I'm not talking as much about a sequel as a maybe remake of the Game Boy Advance version. Of course, after that, I would like amazing sequels to the series and I would love it to become a regular thing where every few years we get a new Gunstar Heroes entry. But this is a series that I don't understand why at least the Game Boy Advance version hasn't had its remake yet. And I know a lot of people are going to tell me that the Nintendo Switch is swamped with run and gun shooters, but trust me, if the Gunstar Heroes franchise would make a return, people will come out in waves to see that franchise revived. So now let's move on to another great platforming series from the Sega Genesis, which was the Star series. And I'm saying series, but there was really only one entry, the Star game itself. And I would say that the Ristar series itself, even in the lifespan of the Sega Genesis, wasn't actually that popular. If I'm talking about me and my friends, very few people were asking me if you picked up Ristar at the video store, because back in the day, yes, we did rent games at the video store. But rather, Ristar, I think, found most of its popularity in the retro revival that I referred to a little earlier where people looked back on the console games that they had back in the day, and they discovered that, you know what? Ristar is a damn solid platformer. Now, in Ristar, you play as a star-shaped character that basically the main mechanic of the gameplay is that you can outstretch your arms and hold on to a bunch of surfaces. And all your enemies, basically, if you get them in your grasp, you will basically one-shot most of them. Now, there are bosses that take a couple of extra shots, but most of the enemies are dealt with by outstretching your arms and grabbing them and then slamming them into yourself. Once you get used to the mechanic, it's actually crazy to see the amount of surfaces that they made grippable in this game. And I would say that the second main focus of this game is the swinging, because when you grab onto certain poles or certain different surfaces, you can swing yourself back and forth in a crazy fashion, and if you time it well, you can do some amazing high jumps. Now, personally, I'm terrible at those in Ristar, so in the footage you're going to see behind, I'm probably going to miss all of them. But the Ristar series is actually so good that I would actually like both. I would want a remake of the original, because the original game is so good that it's deserving of a place on the Nintendo Switch if you can remake its graphics in full HD and really do a top-down remake of the original. But at the same time, just like the Shantae series, I would see the Ristar series being able to get regular entries each and every few years by just throwing in a few new mechanics here and there, and you'll see I'm pretty sure this will be a solid platforming franchise. And we know that the Nintendo Switch, if you come out with a really decent and solid platformer, 
people will buy the game. So the Rise Star series is one of those amazing series that not only would I want a remake, I would love to see sequels after that. Now, the next game franchise is maybe going to be one of the most controversial entries on this whole list, and that is the Shakan game from the original Sega Genesis. Now, I know a lot of people that actually hate this game. I personally loved it back in the day because of its amazing, challenging platforming. And I would say that this is the game on the Sega Genesis that resembled the first and closest to the original Metroidvanias. Now, obviously on the Super Nintendo, we actually had Super Metroid that actually started the whole series. On the Sega Genesis, we never really had a Metroid or a Metroidvania type game, but I would say that the Shakan game was the game that came closest to it. Basically, you were playing an immortal being with dual swords that would travel between different worlds and you could choose which world you wanted to do in which order to acquire different abilities to eventually be able to face the final boss. Sounds slightly like a Metroidvania? Yes, but at the same time, there was a definite, definite better order to do the stages in if you actually wanted to be able to progress throughout the game. Also, I would say that the biggest down point of Shakan was the really choppy fighting system. Like, it, it was very blocky and it didn't feel very good, the fighting system, in my opinion, in Shakan. And that is probably why a lot of people don't like this game. But I would see a full sequel to the Shakan series done as a Metroidvania. And it's very funny because last week when I threw out the question, Shakan was one of the four series that I asked if anyone would want to see a sequel or a remake. And someone came out with the exact same idea of redoing it in a action Metroidvania style. And they actually suggested to do it along the lines of the Blasphemous series. And that would be my exact direction for the Shakan franchise as well. And I really think that if this game could get some care and love, we could have another solid Metroidvania on the Nintendo Switch. Now, the next franchise has a very personal connection to myself, and that is the Shining Force franchise. And basically because it is the franchise that introduced me to the whole concept of a strategy RPG. And back in the day actually had me fall in love with this type of gameplay. Now, I do know that Shining Force did have a sequel on one of the later Sega consoles. But when the Sega consoles died out, so pretty much did the Shining Force franchise. An obvious for JRPGs. This had a pretty standard storyline, but it had some really, really awesome characters over the years that really developed into the franchise. And I would very much compare this to the Fire Emblem series from Nintendo. And for someone who grew up with all these characters, it was just really sad to see the franchise die out. Unlike the Fire Emblem series on the other side that continued getting regular entries every few years. This is another franchise that the original games are so good that I would love to see, first and foremost, remakes of the original Shining Forces. But more than that, with the abundance and receptivity now of JRPGs in the West, this could be an awesome franchise to revive. And as we know, JRPGs don't require that many resources, meaning that a smaller studio could take over the series and have a great deal of success with the Shining Force franchise. And I know personally that this would be a day one purchase for myself, even if the game came out at a full price. Now, I'm not saying to pop it out at full price because I love those budget entries, but nonetheless, this is a franchise that if it would come back, no matter what the format it would come back in, I would definitely at least give it a try. Now, the next franchise I would love to see a retro revival on is the Shinobi franchise. Look, the Ninja Gaiden franchise has been doing well for years. It went into the 3D format. That doesn't mean we need to do the same thing with the Shinobi franchise. I think this could be a solid franchise to stay in the 2D dimension. Now, there have been a few games that we could say almost were spiritual revivals of Ninja Gaiden or Shinobi, like Cyber Shadow, which was so far one of my favorite games to release in 2021. And I personally see a lot of influence from the mechanics from the later Shinobi series in the Messenger series as well. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I do see a clear inspiration there. But especially if we base ourselves on the later entries, so Shinobi 3, Return of the Master, 
these are some franchises that would once again need very little adaptation to be brought up to today's standards. Of course, the gameplay mechanics would need to be polished up a little bit because the movements were a little choppy back in the day. The control system did feel a little bit blocky, but at the same time, that was the beauty of these games. You had to plan out each and every move because you couldn't just depend on split second reflexes. Now, I do know that there was a PlayStation era revival bringing it into the third dimension and the entry was so, so received. But at the same time, I don't think that should be the direction for the Shinobi series. I think we should take the series and keep it original to its roots and keep it in the two dimensions. Now, next on the list, we get a franchise that actually had two entries on the Sega Genesis. And I am really surprised that no one ever picked this franchise up. And that is the Vector Man franchise, which was a character that was completely composed of different polygons. It had a general action platformer shooter setup. And once again, it had sort of a run and gun format. Although this one had a bigger focus on platforming, make it through stages and wasn't really in the Bosch Rush design. It also often had stages that threw in a different perspective, like almost like a minecart stages and things like that. But once again, the Vector Man franchise was based on a platformer franchise. First of all, if we talk about just remaking the two originals, other than updating the graphics in full HD, these games would actually need very little love and care, and you could have a totally awesome entry on the Nintendo Switch as a double pack for a Vector Man remake. Now, if we were to make a sequel, however, this is maybe a series that would need a new hook. We would need something special because back in the day, just being a character completely formed of polygons was maybe enough to attract a lot of attention. Nowadays, it's sort of the norm pretty much everywhere that polygons are present in gaming. Now, this is maybe the first franchise I'm going to suggest moves totally away from the basic platformer and moves totally into the territory of Metroidvanias. Because Vector Man had a very special ability to morph into different objects when he got certain power-ups. Now, I would rather, as earlier, say that this should become permanent upgrades and we could use a Metroidvania formula to basically acquire these different upgrades and to be able to traverse different obstacles. Because to me, when I played Vector Man, I always felt that Vector Man controlled a lot like Samus. Of course, you didn't have that spinning double jump, but you did have a sort of feeling where you could direct your shot in every direction. I don't know if anyone ever got that feeling from Vector Man, but I definitely got it back in the day. And I always wondered why they wouldn't make the shift to a Metroid style of gameplay. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the Vector Man series, and no matter what format it would come back in, I know I would be lined up to pick it up. So now we're at the last two franchises, and these are what I'm gonna call the big two, because I think that these franchises, to anyone who owned a Sega Genesis, they would love to see something come back. And the first one of those franchises is the Altered Beast franchise. Now, personally, Altered Beast was my first ever Sega Genesis game, and I was waiting to pick it up because I played it in the arcades, and when I bought my Sega Genesis, it was almost to be able to play this game at home without having to drop quarters into a machine. Now, I'm going to say something a little controversial. When you look back at the original Altered Beast game, the game isn't actually that good. However, I love it nonetheless. It was those first entries of arcade ports to the Sega Genesis. And it's a classic, and I will replay it over and over again, even though the gameplay itself, when you look at it at its source, is sort of lackluster. But it's really one of those iconic franchises that go beyond the graphics, beyond the gameplay, and really tug at those nostalgia strings. And at the same time, who doesn't love morphing into a werewolf, a bear, a dragon, and killing tons of enemies? Now, this one, I would honestly see, just like what they did with Capcom's Ghost and Goblins franchise, a total remake slash sequel. But staying true to the series roots, where it's arcade-style gameplay, fast-paced stages, and whatnot. But with obviously updated controls, mechanics, gameplay, so that the game actually feels good to play and that your character controls very, very responsively. Because when I say that Altered Beast is sort of a bad game, it's sort of, it, it feels bad to control the character at certain points. And I know we've all been there. Once you know the stages by heart and you know where and when to react, it's not an issue. 
but it's one of those games that you have no choice but to play over and over again in that arcade design to learn all the levels by heart to know when to kick, when to punch, and where the next enemy is going to come from. But the Altered Beast franchise is one that I never understood why it was left to the side. It was such a quarter hog back in the day, and this would be a no-brainer in the retro revival to throw out a brand new Altered Beast game as long as it's done with love and care. If it's not done with love and care, this is a franchise that I would actually want to stay hidden till someone actually revives it, but actually cares about it and doesn't just want to make a quick buck. Now, the last game on our list is, in my opinion, what was the no-brainer. And when I actually asked a question last week, I purposely didn't include it in the list just because I knew it was going to be a landslide if this game was there. And that is the Golden Axe franchise. Now, for anyone who didn't play the Golden Axe franchise back in the day, this is basically a beat-em-up franchise that has you playing as a barbarian, an Amazon, or a dwarf generally. Now, there were some changes in the later entries, but I would say that the first two entries are the best Golden Axes you can play nowadays. And just like the game that inspired this whole list, Streets of Rage 4, Golden Axe would need a full remake and sequel just like Streets of Rage got. And this franchise, I hope it's just a matter of time before we get an awesome remake because we already got Streets of Rage 4. We know we're getting an awesome remake on the Ninja Turtles beat-em-up. And you know what? We even got Scott Pilgrim vs. The World relaunched this year. What would be more amazing than to end 2021 with a total remake of the Golden Axe franchise? I hope to really deep within me that it is on its way because the Golden Axe franchise is a franchise that, once again, I never understood how no one could see the potential to revive this series. And in the hands of an awesome developer like Tribute, honestly, the Golden Axe franchise would be in perfect hands to get a total remake, a total remaster, a total sequel, anything but Golden Axe, a beat-em-up franchise that would totally fit in today's retro revival environment. And when I was a kid, look, we would spend hours in co-op mode, sitting around the Sega Genesis, just knocking out stage after stage. The games weren't even actually that long, and you would often finish them within an hour. But nonetheless, this was an amazing franchise, and we would play the games over and over again. Just those amazing specials when you picked up your magic flask and you had to decide, do I use a level one or do I keep it for the boss and pop it up to the top level? And those amazing graphics when the dragon would come across the screen and scorch everyone with fire. I mean, this franchise has so many awesome moments that Golden Axe really, really deserves to be thrown into the new generation of gamers. So that's pretty much it for my top 10 Sega Genesis franchises that I would love to see revived nowadays. And I want to hear from all of you. Are there any franchises that aren't on this list that you would love to see a modern remake on? And you know what? I don't actually know if this video is going to get any views because I don't know how many people actually care about the Sega Genesis out there. But I know growing up, I had both consoles, a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis, and I really was playing one just as much as the other. And although Sega isn't producing their own consoles anymore, I'm really glad that a lot of franchises found a new home on the Nintendo Switch. And these are 10 others that I would have really loved to find eventually a new home on the Nintendo Switch as well, so that we can all enjoy them for a new generation of gamers. But anyway, as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you like this type of content that's a little different than usual, please do hit that like button. It's the best way to let me know. Also, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my new videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.